All right, so I just recorded like an hour long video about why I came to Poland and Pooms specifically. Hopefully that was eye opening and I answered the question after like all of that time. Um, now, for those of you back home who already knew that story or who didn't and are still interested in listening to me talk, which blows my mind, honestly, you weirdos. Um, I wanted to fill you in on the last couple weeks because it's been a long time since I've recorded a video. A lot has happened. I'm pretty sure I've forgotten about a lot of it. So we're going to do the best we can. Uh, first things first, there's an Ikea here and Ikea is amazing. And if I didn't already tell you about this or have this all done beforehand, let me show you a quick tour. I got these cute little deer paintings and some fake plants because you know, whatever. Uh, sorry, I didn't really make my bed very well. I was rushing out this morning. Little lamp, so that way when my uh, roommate's sleeping or trying to sleep, I don't have to turn on like the giant lights for it. We also got, I'm not gonna turn them on, that's weird. But if you can see it, all across there, we have like this LED tape. And so we can turn that on and change the color and it's pretty cool. I get really excited. Anyways, and then a little rug because I hate wearing shoes in my house. Okay, um, so what can I tell you about Poland? I made a list, so if I'm looking this way, it's because I'm looking at my computer, which is holding up my phone and telling me what to tell you. Um, told you about why Poland, that took an hour. Transfer-wise, cool, awesome. I'm so glad I'm in a better mood about this now because I wasn't like three weeks ago. Okay, moving your money to Poland, getting a bank. It is harder than I could have imagined. I wish someone would have told me about this. I wish I would have thought about it. I wish I would have researched it. I didn't. So like I told you before, there's a bank here. There's lots of banks. You can go to anyone you want. If you speak Polish, your options are far more open than mine were. Uh, if you want someone who speaks English and is really awesome and close to campus, you can go to the Santander location. He's going to love that I'm saying this. His name is Andrzej. So it's like Andrzej, but like the Z from Żabka, so Andrzej. Uh, I don't know his last name. He told me it's really long in Polish. Um, he speaks English and also like French and like eight other languages, but English fluently and Polish fluently so he can help you and he's awesome. If you go anywhere else, remember, and I think I said this in one of the first videos, if they ask you for a TIN, a taxpayer identification number, use your social because you don't pay taxes here and it will work. It's the same amount of letters, numbers, whatever, characters, blah. Okay. Um, now when it comes to actually transferring money, so you can open a bank account, no problem, right? Have one back home. You can wire transfer money over. You're going to pay an average, like if you have Bank of America like me, you pay like 30 or $35 for every international transfer. And then to accept the transfer, a lot of banks will charge you 1% of your transfer just to accept it. Um, not always, sometimes a little more, a little less, but it's usually roughly what you're looking at. It's kind of a pain and it's a lot of money. Um, so you got a few options. One, open up an English US dollar account and open up a, a Zwolki or a PLN account, which is the currency of Poland, here in Poland. And then you can do a couple things. You can transfer money from the US to your US dollar account, only pay the $35 fee, and then you can have the bank, whenever you feel like it's a good rate, they can convert it over to PLN. Call it a day. With Santander, there's an app. You log into the app, you go to transfer, like exchange transfer, whatever, and you can see like what the US dollar is worth. And you can say, I wanna sell this many dollars. It'll tell you what it is. And then you can decide whenever you want. That changes like every second. And so you pick the rate that you feel comfortable with, you transfer it. It's actually really good. I checked that with TransferWise, just as like a fun side note. Uh, I compared the rates over the course of like two weeks and almost every time when it was an average rate, Santander actually beat TransferWise, which the banks aren't supposed to beat TransferWise. That's like why everyone uses it because it's cheaper than the banks, but Santander's pretty good. I have my roommate. She actually uses it to switch it. Um, she does exactly what I just described. I know other people that did it. That's actually what uh, Andre recommended, but here's option number two, which works really well for other scenarios and also... For me, it was simpler, so I used it this time. Um, there's an app called TransferWise. You can download the app on your phone. You can use it online. Get an account. It is free. What you can do is this. You put in your receiving and your transferring bank information into TransferWise only. And then from TransferWise, you literally say, like, I want to send money to this account from this account, and it will take money for me out of Bank of America as an ACH direct deposit so like when I was looking at fees, it was like $65 if I want to send a wire transfer and like $89 if I wanted to send an ACH direct deposit. Problem is 
even though wire transfer seems like it's cheaper, you'd still have to pay the $35 from Bank of America and so it'd end up being more expensive. So ACH, direct deposit, up to $15,000 US dollars you can take. It will automatically pull it from Bank of America, send you emails every time it's on any different step of the process, switch it to PLN for you at a specific rate that typically is right around where Santander was. Again, at an average rate, Santander was winning, which was weird, um, but it's still not a bad rate. It's just not as good. Uh, but then it went over four. And so Santander was giving me like 4.0007. And then transfer wise, when I checked was 4.015. So I immediately took it because breaking $4 is awesome. Um, and it will switch at that rate, send it to your account here in PLM. Do not, if you're transferring it through TransferWise and you have decided to convert it from US dollars to PLN, don't add your account number for your English account because they will switch it back at their transfer rate at that moment when it finally reaches it, which could be days later at a very different rate. And now you are paying way too much and you're losing on the transfer. Last like $200 and I cried. It was a really bad day. I was really high stress. And there's times of months that ladies do things and my body decided to do it and I cried. It's very embarrassing. So one, it's not a big deal. It happens to everybody. If you transfer to worse rate that rather than a great rate, you're going to lose money anyways. If you transfer to great rate, you win money. It's like the stock market. It literally is the stock market. So just know that worse things could happen, better things could happen. Just deal with it. Um, so again, if you want to use TransferWise, it's free. It's a really, really great option. If you do it, be really careful about which accounts you're putting in there. If you're only using TransferWise and you have that in your head, you don't need a US dollar account here. You just don't need it. You literally can get a Polish uh, Zwolte account. You can get a US dollar account back home and you can transfer from one to the other using TransferWise and never need to actually keep US dollars here. Um, another fun thing, if you're a Bank of America customer, they have a travel rewards card, credit card. Um, I switched my cash rewards card to a travel rewards card. They waive the foreign transaction fee of $3 for every transaction every time you use it. So if I go to Germany or wherever, it will update. Um, anytime it connects to Wi-Fi, it lets them know where I am so I don't have to keep saying like, I'm going to this country today. Like it will just know that that's where I'm at. Waves the foreign transaction fee and then you get the bank's rate at that like given moment for your transaction. That will be higher. Like you will pay more using that bank card for that rate than you would at the rate that you're transferring the money here through TransferWise. So if I use my debit card for my bank in Poland, I'm gonna get a better rate, but to make things easier and not have to open up multiple accounts or like to transfer money to different currencies, I'm gonna use my credit card when I'm traveling. So balance, right? But it's an option for you. It's a free card, works really well. You get travel rewards. You can go retroactively take travel related expenses like flights and things like that. And you can actually get reimbursed. I think it's like 1% for any related fees up to a certain amount. So. If you're at Bank of America, remember travel rewards card. And two, whatever bank you're at, doesn't matter if it's B of A or somewhere else, TransferWise is your best friend. Okay. TransferWise and crying, by the way, was the note that I gave me to look that up. And I actually remember to tell you guys about it. Ah, PIC. All right, this is probably the most important thing that I'm going to tell you guys about because I love it. Um, first thing I wanted to do when I came here was find a church. I found a church. Um, I actually found two churches. Uh, one is called Amazing Grace and it's incredible. My friend Daniel and his wife, you go to go there as well as some other people. They are some incredible people. Um, they are also non-denominational Christian and all they want to do is help save all, pretty much anyone they can. So, um, uh, very evangelical, very incredible. If you feel like coming out here and, um, evangelizing, let me know. I can put you in touch with them and they'll just be awesome. Like connecting you to people here. Uh, if you're here and you're Polish and you speak Polish, also let me know, I'll connect you with them because they're incredible and I love them and they're like the most, oh my gosh, they're the nicest people you'll ever meet. But here's the deal, at their church, which I love, they do the sermons in Polish and they have a translator there to translate in English, but I really wanted my church to be a place where I could connect with other students. And I went to visit PIC and when I walked in, I saw like six people from my university right off the bat. Um, two of which were in my classes. And so I was like, yep, all right, cool. I like, I prayed about it right before I got there and I walked in and I was like, that's the best sign that I could get because I really truly believe that if you want to hold yourself to certain standards or if you um, want to keep something a priority, you have to surround yourself with like-minded people. So whether that's surrounding yourself with studious people to make sure that you study um, or, you know, people with certain morals to make sure that you uphold the same ones and avoid certain temptations or 
people of the same religion to make sure that you're prioritizing Jesus in your daily life. Like I, that's hundred percent of why I'm here and I've done the things and accomplished the things that I've done that are good is because of him. So I don't want to make that a back burner thing. So, um, walked in, found them. They're incredible. All their sermons are in English, which is really helpful for me because then I'm focusing on my connection with Christ and not like on translating the language, even though someone else is helping you for me, it was just a lot easier. So, uh, if you're in Poland and you ever want to come with me, send me a message. You're more than welcome to. It's awesome. All right. Uh, while I was there, they had someone come up and speak and it changed my life forever because oh, I was on my bookshelf. I'm not going to go get it. It is roughly here. Um, I actually started a prayer journal. And so whenever I struggle with um, studying and focusing um, or I'm struggling emotionally because there's times with the transition that I just get emotional for no stupid reason. Um, or I guess a reason, but no reason that I feel is justified because I hate emotions. Um, I sit down and I pull up my journal and I write down some things I'm grateful for and I pray for some people and I try to make it not about myself. Um, I throw in some prayers for myself when I really need it, but it's just a way for me to like actually focus on something way bigger than myself in that moment. And it usually actually helps clear my mind and focus and have some perspective on what I'm struggling with. So that has been incredible. Um, next, making trail mix. <laughs> so I don't know why I want to tell you about these things. Um, Really, really fun snack. Good idea. I We went around um, to Bidranka is the majority of materials all came from there. And then I went to um, Piotr i Pavel. So that's Peter and Paul. And I've said it wrong before. And I probably still said it wrong. But we call it P&P &P as foreigners. But nobody can make fun of us. Um, it's like the version of Sprouts here. So I went to both locations and I picked up a bunch of materials and literally like wasabi peas and corn nuts and peanuts and raisins and bleh. And M&M's, of course, but like off-brand M&M's. Um, put all that together and literally just mixed it up, put it in a little baggies for my roommate and I, and we've been eating the like the crap out of it. It's so good. Uh, super nice and cheap snack that has some protein in it and satisfies lots of different flavor cravings. Um, Allegro. Allegro is like Amazon for Poland. Uh, it's all in Polish. So if you are a Mac user, just give up on Safari now and just get google chrome because it's so much easier in every way um it you can literally set it up to translate everything to english for you so then if you use allegro a-l-l-e-g-r-o you can use that to order a whole bunch of stuff have it shipped to you um and you can understand it because it's not in polish so something really cool about that uh actually there's so many there's so many things to tell you guys i don't even know where to start um i don't know how to get this out without making this weird i'm gonna do it anyways my computer won't die. It's at 80%. It'll live. I saved myself a bunch of time for $8. Okay, well, I don't want to take this out because it's actually really stubborn and I'm going to throw it at my computer, do something really embarrassing. So let's just save myself the embarrassment. Get a Polish adapter for your charger. Just literally swap out the US one for the Polish one. Uh, Apple loves us and they put the little voltage thing on here and their voltage goes all the way up to uh, 240 volts. So this will work. You don't actually need a converter for it. You just need an adapter. So that was the best Allegro purchase I've ever made. I also bought a power strip and uh, that cute little lamp I have. Okay, well, that you can't see this at all. Uh, that cute little lamp that I have attached to my bed that I use. It's a little LED one. Bought that on Allegro too. Uh, what's really neat about it, and I'm not going to post these videos because I don't really know how to post little clips all put together or else I'd have so much more to show you. Um, but... There's something called InPost. So you can pay to have things shipped to your address like a normal human being, but that's more expensive than using something called InPost. InPost is really stinking cool. So what you do is when you're ordering things, like you go to shipping methods or whatever, you'll see all your different options. If you click on InPost, it's gonna bring you to a map. It's gonna show you all the InPost locations. And there are two right here by the dorms. So you click on the one that you want. What's gonna happen is they're gonna send you email updates when they send your stuff out. You get it in like two days. It's literally just like Amazon. There's even like an Amazon Prime option that's like Allegro bonus or some nonsense. But you show up, it gives you a QR code in your email when it's ready to pick up. You show up to the location, you click on English so that you can read it. Then you say pick up parcel or something and then you scan your QR code and it's like a whole wall of lockers with no handles. And so you use the screen, you scan it, and then one of the lockers just pops open, you walk up, your package is inside, you shut it, and you leave. So cool. Best part, it's open 24 hours a day. You only have, I think, 48 hours to pick it up, but because it's open literally all day, it shouldn't take you that long. That just would be weird. So um, really neat, honestly. I, I should bring that to the U.S. It's cool. 
way better than the post office. Way more secure. I can't tell you how many packages got stolen from me in the States. Okay, um, I'm going to delete some of these things as we go through so that I don't have to worry about this. Why Poland, transfer wise, PICU, blah, 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 blah. Um, this one's easy. Poznania and Avenida. There are two malls that are really, really close to us. Avenida more so than um, Poznania. But Poznania is like Calvin Klein and Ralph Lauren and blah. It's very expensive brand name stuff. So if you're looking for it, great. It's where all the rich people in Poland go. I'm pretty sure they're the only ones keeping that afloat. So if you don't want to spend money, don't go there. If you want to go there, just to check it out. It's beautiful. Um, but that's like the Rodeo Drive of Poznan. Um, Avenida is just a big shopping mall. It's really close by. If you're looking for literally anything, you can go there. Media Mart has electronics. Um, anything from like a router for internet, which I desperately needed when I got here, um, all the way to, I don't know, video gaming chair and keyboard, a kettle, uh, pans to cook with, you name it, they probably have it. Um, they also have like sports stores, so that's where I got my tennis racket, because there's literally a court right outside our dorm, other side, not, not the construction side. Um, literally anything you possibly need, you probably find there. What else? Oh, you know what else they have there? If you're a, a fitness junkie in any way, shape, or form, or you like supplements, then um, there are pharmacies nearby that you can get most of your supplements. So, like, I got some vitamin D supplements, being proactive about the fact that there's no sun outside most of the time. So I'm trying because I, a sad slash depressed chamois is not a fun chamois, and she knows it. So we're trying to avoid that. Um, so I got that. I got like cranberry pills to keep taking um, folic acid because I feel like every woman is deficient in it, whether they like to admit it or not. I'm just looking here so that I know. Fish oil, apple cider vinegar pills, and the last one's a thermogenic, which I got from a supplement shop. So KFD Nutrition. They're the ones that I went and saw. Um, if you don't know about thermogenics, look it up. It's not the time or place for it. But I'm cold all the time, so I take them specifically to increase my core temperatures, but I'm not as cold. Also, residual fat burning and caffeine. Triple whammy. All right, hold on. This is just one of them. KFD also sells protein. So if you're looking for whey protein supplements, this whole thing was like 10 bucks or less. Um, and there are 700 grams in there. So I really, it's just not a bad price. Um, cheaper than gold standard. If you go to Poznania, they have gold standard whey. So if you're really a snob about brands, you can find it. But um, I got a strawberry banana and a vanilla whey protein. And it's really not bad at all. Like you're looking at, I don't know. Uh, let's see. If you're doing 30 grams, which is one scoop, Looking at two grams of fat, three grams of carbs, 23.7 grams of protein, and then only like 0.5 grams of salt. So like, really not bad. As far as protein is concerned, I was happy and the taste is great. So, you know, whatever. All right, what else? Uh, talk to you about the supplements, talk to you about the malls, which is the actual thing that's on my list. Okay, uh, Body Lab. So this is pretty cool. There's a gym, literally, like if you walk out the dorms and you maybe take like 37 steps tops, if you have a very small stride length, there's a gym. And so it's super awesome. It's really, it's got a very American friendly vibe. Like there's a uh, wall murals everywhere that you turn. It's like superheroes and teddy bears. And like there's a cow that's peeing gold like on the entrance. It's just, it's super artsy fartsy, really like, modern I don't know I don't really know how to describe it but it's it's literally like a very hipster vibe let's put it that way um this gym has got everything that I want essentially out of a gym so like if you go upstairs it's got like a crossfit section with like a rubber slam pad um weights you've got battle ropes you've got boxes to jump on that can be oriented in different ways and heights um they've got pull-up bars monkey bars they've got a rope which i just climbed the other day for the first time so next time i go to a spartan i'm gonna climb the rope because i know how to do it now yes uh, <laughs> um overall really cool it's about 25 us dollars a month if you want a full day membership you can get a cheaper one but it's only during the day until 3 p.m and i'm a night owl so that's not gonna happen um i have water hold please Signed up for that. It was awesome. Um, also taught an upper year and two people in my class how to do basic jujitsu. 
So it's been really fun to teach them how to do that. I found a gym that does no gi and gi classes, so I'm gonna check it out eventually. But right now, for the next couple weeks, I gotta buckle down a little bit because it's crazy. Hang on just a second. Hi, come in. Let's see who this is. This is Karina. We're recording a YouTube video. Would you like to be on it? No. <laughs> She's gonna be on it for like half a second. You should come here and wave because that's really awkward if she doesn't. Okay. This is one of my favorite people that I've met Hi. here. Hi. She's I'm the Karina. second year. This is Karina. Um, she has been like literally the lifeblood for like our entire class because she's helping us figure out how to survive here because it's really disorganized sometimes and really scary and stresses us out. Yes, it's stressful. <laughs> but yeah, she's like one of my favorite people and it's very exciting and I don't really know what I do without her. Neither does anyone in our class. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. Thanks. Thank the whole you. world's going to see this. I only have like 30 followers. That's fine. Perfect. It's going to be great. But there's some strange like people that I don't know yet. So, you know, there's that too. We've talked about lots of things. All I have left to tell them about is AMSA and then the quizzes we've done so far and the lab dissections. I was actually just coming to tell Shami about AMSA, so what a coincidence. Is it good or bad? No, it's very good. Um, so uh, Shami is going to become part of our executive board for this upcoming year. Our president was saying that she was kind of reluctant, but then she's like, well, then I met Shami, <laughs> essentially. And she was just like saying all these good things about her. And everything at our meeting and everyone's like super excited to have Shammy on board and stuff. Oh, you're so. gonna cry. I'm so excited to tell you guys about this. Everyone is like super excited um, and they're saying like, yeah, we basically have an event planned already because <laughs> yeah. of her and everything. So it's um, gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'm pumped. Okay, well, that's really cool. I'll come find you as soon as I'm done recording this, and we'll hang out. See you later, YouTube. I'm so excited you got to meet her. This is, like, the best video ever now. <laughs> All right, love you. See you soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye. All right, so that was a perfect segue. Uh, <laughs> literally, the next thing on the list is AMSA. So um, if for those of you who, if anyone's in physician recruitment in general or works with residents, you probably have heard about it. Um, it's the American Medical Student Association. And so uh, they have it back in the States, and people are involved in it. They, whoa, words are hard. People are involved in it back there, but um, it's really, really crucial to us out here because I cannot stress this enough. Uh, in the last video, I talked about how I know that I was meant to be at Pooms and I love it and there's so many things about it I absolutely adore. But um, on our very first day, we had someone come and talk to us from the second year or third year and he said something I'll never forget. And he said, it takes a special kind of uh, ambition to do something like this, to pick up, move to a new country and to want this bad enough and like for in my case, like soon enough to actually come out here and do this. It's not, it's not, it's not easy. And there are certain professors that will help you and guide you. And they're trying to help you do well on the MBMEs. And they're trying to help you and prepare you for SEP. 80% of them so far don't care. They do lectures based off of their slides. They do tests based off of their slides or stuff that's totally separate from their slides. But they don't care if it correlates with what you need to know for these exams. So you literally have to be someone who will take your education into your own hands, not do the bare minimum, not just try to focus on how do I get a good score on this exam? It's how do I learn this material effectively and how do I put it together so that I'm gonna be a good physician? So um, I can't stress that enough. But now that being said, AMSA is awesome because it's a great resource for students who are trying to go back to America for the residency training um, or as a physician one day in general or, or they just wanna keep their options open. Um, and so they historically have had a really, really huge presence on this campus is what I've been told over the last few years, specifically the last four, uh, they've really increased their presence and they've done a lot in the realm of physician wellness to try to prevent um, like student suicide happens in a lot of places, um, resident suicides, physician suicides. We know about that back in the States. We talked about physician burnout a lot. I was actually on the physician wellness committee at St. Joe's that we built um, with some of the deans of Creighton at the time. Well, I don't know if they were the deans of Creighton or the Alliance. I don't know who's who anymore. Um, but some really incredible physicians and administrators all got together to try to combat that like back home in the States. Here, they're a little bit um, further behind than where we were, right? And so trying to get people realistic expectations, find resources to help them be prepared to make the transition to the States to do what they need to do now and then all throughout this journey so that they don't end up messing themselves up for later um, is huge. And so AMSA specifically actually goes out of their way. Um, they have an executive board. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm sorry. This is just, that was great timing. And I'm 
the lip balms. I was waiting for that news tonight and I was gonna wait to record the video until I found out so I could tell you guys, but then I wanted to record the video before I forgot and then waited another week, so. Ah! But um, the executive board is cons like, it consists of different departments and um, on each of these departments, like they're responsible for different things. So whether it's like wellness outreach uh, or wellness like initiatives um, or specifically what I care about is um, it's, oh boy, this is embarrassing. I should really know. Uh, professional development. There we go. And so um, we basically chair all of the initiatives for like events and things to prepare someone from a professional point of view. So like there are CV workshops where I guess to take my expertise as a senior physician recruiter. Thank you, God, for having a cool plan for my life where I get to use this. But I get to take my expertise and my knowledge and my experience and help these students actually build a CV that will help them in their future careers, whether that's in the States or not. But specifically for those who are trying to go back to America, I can tell them, hey, you know, as a recruiter, here's what I was looking for. Here's what I wasn't looking for. Here's what's really necessary when it comes to like the layout and structure so that it flows well and why. Um, and here are things that are super illegal for you to include on them. So like, please don't put your social security number on another CV. I'm sick of seeing that as a recruiter. So like, it's just, I'm really excited. Um, another thing too, and this is really worth mentioning because if anyone back home is watching this from Dignity and you have any desire to get involved, please reach out to me. Um, <laughs> I'm still excited. Okay, so now I'm on the executive board for AMSA as a first year, which is like not that likely, but um, someone met me, they asked about my background, they heard about the knowledge that I had. I basically told them, I said, if you or any of the other upper years need any help with your CVs or want any information about programs back in the States or like need connections, I said, especially if you're in family medicine and you want to go back to uh, Arizona, I know a great medical group. And so, yeah, we got to recruit them early, guys. Students, never, never too soon. And so <laughs> I said, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. I would love to connect you with people before I lose these connections or forget about the information and the people that I know. Like, I'll always love and cherish you guys, but I forget how much value you can provide to these students. And realistically, it could be a really cool symbiotic relationship. So um, if you at any point in time want to talk to students about, I don't know, program selection or like just working in the States in general from an employed perspective, for those of you who I know who have started your own practices, um, if you have any advice for students in general, but specifically for foreign medical graduates, who want to be informed about like practicing and also training in the states please let me know um we're gonna start working together to get some of our program directors from dignity um, as well as some other physicians um, and just get them to speak to students and do like a q a session um we have somebody already who's going to be flying out to poland and so uh, we're setting up some time for them to answer questions in person with these students there's not like a crazy budget so that we can't like fly people out but if you're going to be in europe anyways Please keep us in mind. Um, I have been so blessed and fortunate to learn the things I've learned through all of you. And so to have a platform to be able to share this, it's such a blessing. I just, I, I get really emotional. I'm trying not to cry. It's fine. It's cool. Everything's fine. Uh, but I'm, I'm really excited about being part of this and I'm excited to be able to share this with the other classmates that I have because there's no point in having this information if I can't help other people with it. So, um, more to come on that. I can't wait. When there's events, we'll take tons of pictures and we'll post it on social media or whatever. Uh, okay, so AMSA is done. <laughs> That's all you need to know right now. Um, last part, I actually wanted to talk about school for a hot second. I don't know. Mm. I'm already at 20 minutes. Okay, cool. We're going to keep this under 40 this time because I think that's the longest I've gone so far. Um, we have already had just to date. So it's now Wednesday, the, what, the first? So in the first month of classes, we've already had five quizzes. We had two in histology. Um, we're having our third one this Saturday. Oh, tests happen on Saturday, like on a really regular basis. So heads up for that. It sucks really bad, but that's okay. It's fine. Who needs weekends? No comment. So first one was really straightforward. Um, we had a lot of guidance. It lined up with the lectures really well. And so you knew exactly what was going to be on the exam and you could study for it really well. Second one, we felt like the material way far branched outside of what we were prepared for. It was outside of the slides. It was outside of histology. There was more biochemistry and more details about everything except for what we prepared. And so we were really disheartened. Um, a lot of people failed that exam. Um, 
I, it was not pretty. I didn't fail it, but I didn't do that great. I can tell you right now, it was not one of the highest marks. Um, I think the highest score we got was in the low 70s. And then the lowest was like a 20 something percent. So um, scared, the, scared the crap out of us, rightfully so. Um, we have another exam this Saturday. I'll let you know how it goes on the next video. Hopefully it's gonna go great. We had a quiz. So we've had two quizzes for um, physiology right off the bat. Uh, they were together. One was on thyroid um, hormone in general. And then the other one was on immunology and serology. So the immune system essentially is what you need to know. And then we had, and all that kind of went decent. It was as expected. They have a training, or I'm sorry, it's a, I don't even remember what OLAT stands for. It's O-L-A-T and it's like online learning and technology or something. I, I'm probably making that up. But um, <laughs> it sounds like the Hunger Games, but you walk into this room, you give them your student ID, they give you a lanyard with a number and a key. You go to the locker that corresponds with your number. You open it up, you put all of your stuff. You're not allowed to wear a jacket. You can't wear glasses. You can't wear hats. Um, you can't have your phone, obviously. No pens, nothing. You put everything in there except for your student ID and this lanyard lock it then you go back into a different room and there's computers everywhere it's alternated by computer stations so you can't be anywhere near anyone they have one laminated sheet of paper with a wet erase marker and you wait until instructions go over this pa system and that's why i say it's like the hunger games because they're like good morning students log on to your computers and blah 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 please remember that you cannot do this and you can do this and you should do this and then you're done and you really honestly are waiting for them to be like may the odds be ever in your favor but it's very creepy and there's a lot of like reverb. It's not pleasant. So you take these quizzes, it's on this online platform. And then as soon as you finish, it scores it and you can see exactly which ones you got right and which ones you got wrong. wrong. So we did the first two exams, our first two quizzes for that class for physio. We had our first quiz for histology. Then we had our second quiz for histology. We all freaked out. Then we had another quiz for physio, but the way they structured it was Saturday was the first quiz and then Monday we had another one. So it's really been like back to back with like not a true break. Um, and then obviously you have other classes happening at the same time. Um, so that was super fun. What else? Lab dissection. Okay, one more story. And then I don't know if I can get it out in eight minutes, but we'll try. So um, for anatomy, for any students coming in, heads up, couple things you're going to need. I think I told you before, if you're going to get exempt from biostatistics, do it before you get here. You're going to need the syllabus from your statistics course and also your transcript that shows that you completed it. And, and then you have to send that to Bogna, who's like the lady who runs pretty much everything in an admin and be like, hey, I want the exemption from this course. Let me know. The Dean's Council that makes the decisions for exemptions and like most big decisions for the organization meets every Tuesday. And so you should get it back relatively quickly within like a week if you send it in advance. If you wait, it took us months. I just got mine last Tuesday. I celebrated. It was like right before the final exam that I didn't want to take. Anatomy. You need an atlas. Um, almost everybody here uses a PDF of some sort. They either printed one of these so that you can get them printed at the coffee shop for like 25 bucks or something like that. Uh, maybe less, but I think it's about that. You can also use, uh, a lot of people have iPads and so they'll put the PDF on their iPad, carry their iPad into a uh, lab and then keep that with them with the cadaver. And so that's like a really easy, light way for them to do it. Mine's super heavy, but I will never get rid of it because I know I already showed you guys, but everybody back home that I love, all of our um, administrative leaders all left me little love notes before I left. Um, by the way, uh, Michael Buza, our, I'm just I'm finding all of your notes in my book. He wrote into my textbook on certain pages and made some snarky comments and I'm finding them and they are funny, but also I would give you a noogie, which is this, this, nothing weird, uh, if I saw you for some of them because really, really, Anyways, uh, you're gonna need an atlas. You're also gonna need something called Dissector. It's another book. Uh, it tells you about like how you're dissecting certain sections. I don't like it. It describes it verbally and I think that that's miserable. So I never got the book. I don't know if that's gonna kick me in the pants. I'll keep you updated. I just go online and I literally look at videos of the dissection we're about to do. And so I watch it and I hear what they're saying as they're doing it. So when I come in, I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I think if you were to pair that with Dissector, that's probably going to be ideal. I didn't want to find another book, so I didn't. But I feel really prepared so far, so it's been okay. Um, in addition to that, you're going to need gloves. You can get them at any pharmacy. Uh, like 15 Zs, so that's approximately, I don't know, like less than $5. Uh, you need a dissection kit, which you can buy here. All you really need are um, forceps. Really get the scissors with the clamp. I don't know what they're called yet, sorry. Not a doctor yet. 
And then you need a scalpel, either one with a replaceable blade or you can get one that is just a fixed blade and use that too. You're working with a cadaver, it's not a human. You get to rewash and keep the same utensils throughout the year. Um, and then honestly, we don't pull them out very often. They usually have some tools we can use, so hasn't been a problem yet. It might be later, but anyways, get a dissection kit. You can order them on Amazon. I got a really nice set for less than 20 bucks because I had um, really close friends, which are my family. Hi, Ingrid and Dave. Uh, they actually sent me a gift for my birthday and said, hey, here's some money, get a nice dissection kit. So I had to do them justice. Let me see if I can find it. It's really cute. It doesn't matter. I'm just telling you right now because it's a cadaver. But for someone who wants to be a surgeon one day, I really geek out over this. So if you guys want to know what you bought me, it's this. And so I've got all my little spare blades in here. And a whole set. So it's been really good. Um, okay, so gloves, dissection kit, atlas, lab coat. Make sure you get a lab coat. If you don't have one, they're not going to let you sit for lab. If you're late for more than like two minutes, they're not going to let you sit for lab. Well, they'll let you sit. They uh, mark you absent. Um, okay, last thing. So we went in and um, we have, I think it's Dr. Sobeski. I think that's how you say his name or Sobieski, but I think it's Sobeski. I don't know. Anyways. He is uh, he has a very endearing nickname that I'm not going to say because I don't like it. Um, everybody knows who he is. And apparently he intimidates students until they cry sometimes. I love the man. I think he's great. He has helped us so much. He is very detailed. He is full of knowledge. And he, he expects us to know what we're doing in lab before we get there. And he's understanding when we forget certain things or we didn't find stuff. Like, that's fine. We don't need to know everything. But he wants to know that you've prepared. And if you haven't prepared, he's going to humiliate you. And you just have to know that. And it's okay. Like, and he's not doing it in a mean way. He just, he'll turn to you and he, he does this really cute thing. So, like, he doesn't know our names, obviously, yet. He might eventually learn. But he goes, lady. And he'll point at some girl. and be like, what is this? <laughs> like, he'll point somewhere. Or he'll, like, he'll ask you a question straight up. He'll be like, how many cervical vertebrae are there? And you have to be like, oh, yes, hello, sir. There are seven. I'll be like, very good, or dobshe. And then he'll like move to the next person and be like, lady. And he'll point at another person and be like, what's this? Sir, what's this? And like, just that's just who he is. So we're sitting there in lab. And I remember on the very first day of anatomy, I, I think I did this to myself, but I'm just going to run with it because he doesn't hate me yet. So hopefully I don't ruin that. Um, we were sitting there and there were a few students who haven't really taken like a lot of anatomy and they've forgotten most of what they learned or they didn't cover certain things right and so we're sitting there and they were struggling with how many vertebrae there were in every um chunk or whatever of the spine and then I overheard them so I was like hey let me help you learn this because this is one of the very few topics I'm gonna actually be helpful in without having to study because I remember this because we had a TA named Daniel back in ASU who was phenomenal he will never see this but he had curly hair and he was really nice anyways so I was talking to them and I was like, here's the deal. What time do you eat breakfast in the morning? And they're like, seven. I was like, what time do you have lunch? And they're like, 12. I was like, what time do you eat supper? And they're like, five. And I was like, wow, perfect. That could have gone wrong. But you guess the right numbers every time. I was like, seven cervical, 12 thoracic, and then five lumbar vertebrae. Like, yay, everybody wins. And then it's five and three or five and three to five, but whatever, we don't care. Uh, so we talked about all of that. And then afterwards, I was like, oh, how do you, what about C1 and C2? And they're like, what about them? And I was like, they have different names. What are they? And they're like, oh, isn't it like, axis and something with an A and I was like yeah axis and atlas do you know which one's first and like no so I was like well think about it the whole world spins on its axis that's like a thing you hear right I was like so the atlas spins on the axis like that's how you know and he, then I felt a presence and I turned and Sobieski I'm, I swear I'm saying his name wrong is right there and I, I, I'm freaking out this is the first day I met him it was after class I figured I couldn't get in trouble for helping someone learn but uh, you never know. I don't like breaking rules. So I turned and he's there. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he's like, no, continue. And I was like, all right, cool. He doesn't hate me. Awesome. So I walk away, right? I think that's why he did this. It could have been arbitrary and I could be assigning way too much meaning to this. But fast forward back to him quizzing us and all this stuff, right? Our very first day of anatomy, we got to look at this like cool models and stuff, go over course regulations. And that was pretty much it. The second day of anatomy, we dissected. And we're talking like, there is a body in there. It is upside down. Nothing has been done to it yet. Like, it's been preserved, obviously. There's formaldehyde. You smell it immediately. You know. But this incredible human has been donated to us to learn. And, like, nothing has been prepped yet. 
So thankfully I'd watched those videos, thank you Tatiana for sending them, about the dissections, because we walk in there and he's going from like person to person on the left. And he's like, you lady this, you lady this, you sir this, right? And then he picks up a scalpel, he scans the room until he sees me and he stops. And he goes, lady, hands me the scalpel and goes, God. And I was like, the, like, the cadaver? And he was like, certainly. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm gonna cut open a cadaver like this is okay so I took it I'm not gonna shy away from this ever at all like I'm horrified but whatever and you can tell like half the class is like oh god I'm so happy that wasn't me and so I go up I never realized the next skin was gonna be that thick but you have to like actually palpate the back of the skull to figure out where like the certain landmarks are to dissect and so we do that like half confident <laughs> but thankfully this is not a real patient yet and so you like actually feel different things you're palpating making sure that you know what you're doing and then you just go in and you make your first incision and so I got to make an incision down the back of this cadaver and um it was awesome I don't know that's literally like all I got it was just a really really cool experience and I felt super honored and I left and I was fangirling and I called my parents and I'm pretty sure it was like two in the morning back in Arizona when I called um so I just left a voicemail but I it was a really really cool experience so here is a recap. Um, so far, so good. This place is awesome. For those of you who are asking if I miss home, the answer is no. And it's not offensive at all. I don't mean it that way. I love all of you. I still feel like I'm on vacation in a weird way. Like I woke up. I'm somewhere else. I feel like there's two ways to describe this. One, like an alternate reality. Like I just, my other life doesn't exist. Therefore, I can't go back to it. Therefore, I can't miss it. Like it's so different that I don't even think about home. And we're so busy. Like, when I hang up, I'm going to go study and I'm going to go to the library until 11.45 when they kick me out. Like, we don't stop. And so, you don't really have time to miss home and you don't really have the capacity or, like, the understanding to miss home. There's another part of it where, like, you know how when you go on vacation, you want to, like, be in the moment and absorb as much as you can because you know you're going to get home eventually and you're like, oh, I don't, why would I miss it? I'm going to be there anyways. It's kind of the same mentality. Like, I feel like I'm not going to be here. Like, I don't feel like this is my new life. I don't feel like I'm here for four years. I feel like I'm just here on vacation almost. Even though it's been a month, it feels like four days. And so I'm like, oh, I must soak it all in. I don't even think about. So I don't really miss home. Um, I'll be excited to visit. I'm really glad, though, that I don't miss it because I want to enjoy it just like I'm enjoying here when I'm back. And when I come back, I want to be just as happy to be back. And, um. I'm very grateful. I think it's a total God thing that he is protecting me and making me not so emotional or like miss home or be really sad yet. It might change, but so far so good. Um, school is awesome. It's hard. It's med school. If it wasn't, it'd be crazy. There are good classes. There are bad classes. There are great teachers. There are not so great teachers. There are people who embarrass you and talk crap about you in Polish under their breath. And there are others that will sit with you until you understand something because they truly care and they want you to understand the principle and they want to help. It is just like any other school that I've ever been to. You've got good and bad and ugly and it literally is exactly what you make it. So um, I don't know if I can remember any other things to tell you guys. The only other things we got is like uh, Polish words. So I don't know how many I recited the last video I don't think it was very many I know I said bidranka which is ladybug and I said jabka which is frog um a couple other ones we learned so I'm gonna review just all the ones I can think of off the top of my head right now I will absolutely forget some and I will absolutely repeat some from the last time but we're getting better we're learning more um so uh, if I'm saying hi to you a formal normal way to say hi is chist and so that's like hello you can also technically use it to say goodbye but that's weird um, if you're saying hi to a younger kid and you want to say it informally, that's my name. I know I said this one, the last one, it's Shema. Um, if you become really good friends with somebody and you're, okay, so if you're not, if you're saying formally goodbye, you'd say, um, Dovizenia. If you're saying bye to somebody that you care about, that you're very close with, you can say pa or papa, which is like bye or bye bye instead of goodbye. Um, you can also say, so if you're saying hello, you say Junkuya. I'm sorry, whoa. I've done that so many times. It's very embarrassing. Just, you know what? If you're Polish and you have American people and they accidentally say thank you instead of hello, be patient with them because I don't mean to do it and I do it a lot. 
Um, all right, so you say Jindobrev if you're saying like hi to somebody. If you're saying thank you, you say Jinkuya or Jenki, which is thank you or thanks, respectively. Um, if you're leaving and you want to say bye, you say Dovezenya. You can also say um, if it's nighttime, you can say Dobranots, which is like good night. Um, my favorite word that I wish I would have learned sooner, which I know Daniel taught me originally when I first got here, um, Daniel and his wife, Yugoda. Um, they had told me this right off the bat because I asked and then I forgot it immediately. Um, Pseprasha. So that is like, excuse me slash sorry, depending on the context. Um, proche is please or like, of course, or you're welcome or give me sort of like all in one, again, depending on context. Um, what else? Talk we already said was yes, nie is no. Um... If I say Nestrovia, I can say that as like, God bless you if you sneeze, or it's also like too good health or good health for you if you're cheersing somebody. Um, the shortened version of Nestrovia is Struvka, I'm pretty sure. Might be wrong on that, but I think it's right. Uh, if you, I'm sorry, dad, that I know this, but somebody taught me if you want to say, let's get drunk, you say Yazda. Don't hate me. I won't say the swear word that I learned that starts with a C and ends with Irva but with more of a Polish accent. We'll just leave it at that. Um, what else? Ila uh, Tokushuya. Probably said that wrong, but it's like, how much does this cost? That was pretty important for me at some point in time. What else? What else? What else? Mleko means milk. Ser means cheese. Oh, and then counting. Okay, so this is going to be ugly, but we're going to do it anyways. I uh, forced myself to memorize while walking how to count 1 to 10. So, jeden, dwa, trzy, cztery, pięć, sześć, which sounds a lot like cześć, but it starts with a different sh and ch. That's literally the smallest difference, but it changes it from hello to six. And then siedem, osiem, dziewięć, dziesięć. So that's 1 through 10. Um... Still the hardest language I've ever heard in my life. Oh, oh, how did I forget about this? Okay, it's not even on my list because I am an idiot. So uh, today we all got dressed up and we didn't have class, which is why I have time to actually make a video is because um, we went and we had our, um, oh boy, words are hard. Not induction. I really should know this word. All right, well, I'll figure it out. Uh, we are here at post on, I know I said this in a previous video, but we don't get our white coat ceremony till the end of the year. You have to pass certain classes to even get your white coat. Like that's just part of it. If you don't, you don't get your coat. End of story. Um, but we had something else today. This is so embarrassing. It's fine. Um, we had this little event and it's like the ceremony that basically says like we took an oath as students to like constantly do what's right and like respect the profession that we've chosen and the patient and like those around us as a result of the profession we've chosen and it was really 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 cool and so um honestly it was really hard because the entire thing was in polish there were no subtitles no one translated anything to english if somebody was translating in english to you someone told you to be quiet because it's super inappropriate and disrespectful to talk during it um but it was really cool and um, it reminded me, one of our students actually said it reminded them of Hogwarts. They're not wrong, but um, it kind of gave me goosebumps because there's like an organ playing and there's a choir singing and everyone's in traditional physician like garb for um, Poland. And so like they're in their like big coats and jackets with like all the honors and de uh, decorum that like goes with whatever position they're in. So our president came and he talked to us um, quite a bit, also mostly in Polish. Um, but it was just a really cool day. Inaug inauguration day? I'm pretty sure that might be it. I might be lying to you. You know what? This is just a rough day. I'm very tired. I've recorded like two hours of videos for you guys today. So hopefully Austin Tepper is happy because she was harassing me to post a new one of these for a long time. Um, but the quality has declined drastically as I've gotten tired and I'm going to go eat and then study for like seven hours. So yeah. Um, but, uh, it was a really special day. I super enjoyed it. We took a lot of pictures out front. I of course had to jump up in heels. So I'm sure you guys will love those. Um, I've met some really incredible people and we've had a great time getting to know each other and really bonding through this. It's been already super difficult in just a month. And so, um, God's just 
super blessed me with one this experience two the opportunity here in so many different ways but three some really incredible people to like be by my side um i now after a month understand why physicians stay in touch with people from medical school and residency because they already feel like family so um for any of my classmates who are somehow watching this i don't know why you weirdos but thank you for being awesome and for inspiring me every single day um, because you're all just incredible people and hearing about your journeys and how you got here and how God's moved through all of our lives so that we can be here together studying at this school and ripping our hair out together. It's pretty cool. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. I, uh, will record another video. I'm not going to promise any timelines anymore because I'm obviously terrible at them. Hopefully if I do it more often, they'll be shorter. If I don't, they will be 50 minutes and 27 seconds. Um, because you know, why not be extra? So I'm going to go eat some of the uh, fruit salad that I made. And eventually I'll cook the chicken that I've marinated in some homemade salad dressing. And then I'm going to go talk to Karina because I'm really excited about this whole AMSA thing. God bless.